y'all. Welcome back. My name is Taylor and today I have the Apple Studio Display review for you. Apologies if I sound more nasally than usual. It is springtime in Texas here and oh my gosh, springtime in Texas is an absolute nightmare with the allergies, so just bear with me. Like I said, I have the Apple Studio Display here. I love it. It is amazing. And that is the end of the review. <laughs> I'm only kidding. There's a lot to talk about here with this display, so let's dive into it. Okay, first, let's talk about the specs of this monitor. So this is a 5K display. It has 600 nits. It is IPS. It is LED backlit. And those specs probably all sound really familiar because those are very similar to the LG Ultrafine 5K that this display is replacing specs wise, but let's talk about that for a sec. So in addition to those specs, this monitor features a webcam, 12 megapixel ultra wide that supports center stage. It has support for Hey S word, and it also has support for a three mic array, which is very similar to what's found on the 16 inch MacBook Pros. And it also has a six speaker system with a force canceling woofer, which really sounds amazing. It also features a Thunderbolt and three USB ports on the back of the monitor. And it also has a very nice braided power cord on the back, which is non-removable. Now that we've talked about the specs of this monitor, let's dive into the various components that make up this device, starting with the enclosure and the build quality of that enclosure, because Apple has done something seriously impressive here. So the panel enclosure is an all aluminum, very industrial looking design with like clean lines and sharp edges. It looks very nice and it comes in three stand configurations. So there's the base stand configuration, which is what I have here on this monitor. It is a tilt system and it doesn't do much besides that, it just tilts. Now, if you want tilt and height adjustment functionality, you're gonna have to upgrade to their Pro Stand, which is gonna be $400 more. It's very similar to the XDR Stand, but it just doesn't have the pivot like the XDR Stand has. There's also a third and final configuration, which is a face amount that you can put on there, which is no additional cost past the base model, so you're not paying any additional for it. And once you choose it, that's what you get configured with the monitor. Now you can change it, but you're gonna have to go into an Apple store and have a technician look at it and change out the stands for you. They're not changeable on their own. So that's just something to keep in mind. And now talking about the base stand that comes with it, I'm very impressed with how well built this stand is. It's probably the best well built stand of any monitor that I've tried. The tilt, is very effortless. Apple has fine-tuned the tension and the weight distribution with this, where moving it with one finger just feels so effortless and weightless. It's like moving it on a cloud because the bearings are just so nice. It's incredible. One thing that I don't like about it though is the looks of it. It has like this slant to it that I think kind of makes it look a little cheap. Um, it doesn't really make it stand out, whereas the Pro Stand, it's more perpendicular to the enclosure, and I think it just has like a more premium professional look, um, but that's just, a, that's just a nitpick. Looking at the top and bottom of the enclosure, we have these precision drilled holes, which look really nice, really fancy, and they feature the speakers at the bottom, as well as holes for airflow, because this does feature a couple fans, which is pumping air through the system to keep everything cool, and that exhaust out the top. It also has a three mic array at the top as well as a webcam and an ambient light sensor on the left of the panel. And since we're at the front of the display now, you can see that the bezels are kind of big. I was genuinely surprised that the bezels were this big when Apple first announced this monitor and it's noticeable. It, I think it does not really do this monitor any favors in terms of looks. I think if they wanted to stick with their design language, they would have made it a um, lot thinner bezels and maybe even included a notch. Like I know they have to support that webcam hardware up there that's big, 
And you know, I really wouldn't have minded a notch of this because at least it would have been consistent with my MacBook Pro that I'm using to connect this monitor with all the time. But that's just my opinion. Okay, so we've talked about the enclosure. Now let's talk about what's in the enclosure, which is really the main event of this monitor. And that is the panel, that 5K 600 nit IPS LED backlit panel. Okay guys, it looks amazing. I know a lot of people are comparing the specs on paper to the LG Ultrafine, but let me tell you, I haven't spent a lot of time with the LG Ultrafine, but I have seen it and this looks stunning. This monitor truly looks stunning. When I look at it side by side with my MacBook Pro, the color science is very similar. Apple have done an amazing job at calibrating the colors on this display. There's also a couple configurations with this panel here. The one that I have here is the base gloss panel. You can also get a nano texture, which helps to diffuse the light. It's more of like a, a matte screen, something more anti-reflective. So if you're by a window or something, you're not gonna see those reflections, but you're gonna be paying uh, $300 more for this upgrade. I just stick with the base gloss panel and it looks really good. I don't really have a lot of problems with the reflections because I found that the 600 nits of brightness really offsets the glare. So if I have it right next to a window, the glare is there, I can see it, but it doesn't really bother me because the panel is so bright that I can see all my content. It's not very distracting. Now, in terms of that LED backlight, let's talk about that because this is not the mini LED that we see on the uh, 14 and 16 inch laptops. Those have truly next levels of deep blacks. You can really see those deep blacks here. I have the 16 inch on the left, the studio display in the middle, and then uh, my Alienware 240 Hertz IPS monitor on the right. And you can really see the difference in these. These are just running a black clip from YouTube and it's really noticeable there. But when you put images on the screens and you see these side by side now, there really isn't a lot of difference between these. The laptop and the studio display, very similar in color. Obviously the Alienware is going to be different because it is calibrated differently by Dell. If you're worried about the mini LED part of it and that's kind of dissuading you from this monitor, I'd say see it in person because the colors in this are really, really great. I think the only place you're going to really notice that mini LED color is in those blacks. This monitor also is a 60 Hertz monitor, so no pro motion here like you get on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, which is kind of a shame, but honestly, when I'm working with these side by side, because I constantly have this monitor connected to my MacBook Pro, I don't really notice that big a difference in day-to-day -day activities. Maybe in scrolling, the 16 inch is a little brighter or a little snappier, but the, the studio display doesn't feel slow or choppy significant to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, that 5K panel, oh man, let me tell you, it has the same pixel density as the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but there's something very special about seeing that pixel density blown up in 27 inches. This thing is just a joy to use because text looks so crisp. It really makes me wanna just write more code. Makes me wanna read just one more article because I love looking at text on this monitor. It's so good. And in terms of video and photo editing, it is next level to see the, the shots coming out of the A7R4, which is a high resolution 60 megapixel camera. It is insane to see that blown up in 27 inches in 5K. It is just mind blowing. Also for gaming, this isn't really a gaming monitor, and you're gonna need serious hardware to push those pixels to 5K, but it looks really good. About the only game that I could get to play in 5K that ran above 60 frames per second was Bioshock, and it looks good. I really wish I could play more games on this monitor, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, next, let's talk about the speakers in this because it does feature six speakers with force-canceling woofers and Apple has really hit it out of the park with this. This is amazing. I don't know how they achieved this, but the sound sounds really, really fantastic, especially the bass. The bass gets very deep and it's very crisp, 
so much so that if I raise the volume enough, this desk, it will, it will rattle this desk and you can feel the bass to this desk, which is just mind blowing. I was not expecting that to be that significant. And even compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which the first time I heard that, I was blown away by those speakers. And if I had to quantify this monitor, I'd say that these are about twice as good as the 16 inch MacBook Pro speakers. But here I'm gonna post a sound clip of a couple comparisons and you let me know which one you like. All right, so which one did you find to sound better? It might be kind of hard to tell because it's just my recording. I don't really have like a studio controlled environment, but let me know in the comments below what your thoughts were on which one sounded better. Speaking of the sound quality, let's talk about the built-in three array studio microphone as well as the webcam. So right now I'm on the webcam in that three array studio mic. And this is how it sounds and this is how it looks. The uh, webcam quality is a little underwhelming in my opinion. I mean, this is the same webcam that is in the front facing iPhone 11 Pro phone and also an iPad. And this is what the image quality looks like. I will say that center stage is highly entertaining though. It is just so much fun to move around and to get up have center stage move along with you. <laughs> it is just a really cool kind of party trick to, to use. And, and I thoroughly enjoy using it in these kinds of Zoom conversations. However, talking about center stage for a second, there is a couple caveats to this because there is no center stage on anything prior to 12.3. So you have to be on 12.3 to take advantage of center stage. Also, if you're not using 12.3, or a software that's compatible with center stage, you can still use the webcam, but it's severely cropped in. Cropped in so much so that it kind of chops off your head. Like it's a little too tall based on where you're sitting. I think, I think most people are sitting with their eyes level to the center of the monitor and it's just a bit too tall. It's kind of awkward. And I'm really surprised that Apple cropped it in this much. I kind of wish they would take that out and just make it widescreen if it wasn't supported, I think it would look a whole lot better. Some other notable quirks that I found with this monitor include connecting this monitor to non-Apple computers. So this monitor connects via a Thunderbolt cable. And so naturally I wanted to connect this to my gaming computer, my RTX 2080. It has a USB-C out port. I thought the Thunderbolt to USB-C would work just fine. I was wrong. I had a couple USB-C to display port converters or cables and one of those cables it advertises that it's 32.4 gigabits per second which should be enough throughput to support an image via that cable i tried both of them they didn't work at all i suspect that the 32.4 gigabits per second one was not as advertised so i ordered another one it hasn't come in yet i'm going to try that out and push results on that but i was really surprised that it did not connect to a graphics card and a lot of other people have too. There's an article by Justin Swirls. I hope I'm saying that right, but I've linked his article down at the bottom in the description. So be sure to give that a read where he talks about his experience with this and various methods that he tried with his studio display on, I think he had an RTX 3080. So check that out if you wanna learn more about that experience as well. Additionally, I noticed that of the air that's coming out of the top exhaust here, the right side tends to get a little hotter than the left. I don't know why, but that's just something I observed. And also I have a little bit of confusion around the marketing behind the A13 in this monitor. The A13 was a big flex that Apple presented with this monitor saying that this monitor has an A13 bionic chip. That's amazing, right? and it controls center stage and it controls the audio to do the spatial audio or whatever magic they're doing with the audio. 
which is impressive, but that's really it. That's all it's doing. And I was kind of expecting a little more with the A13 because I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is what I'm recording on now. And that is an absolutely fantastic phone. Even though it's a, it's a few generations behind now, that phone is a beast. It is still as fast as the day I got it and it runs everything. I love it. And I'm just kind of disappointed that Apple didn't take advantage of some of that extra power in this monitor and make something that is kind of unique, something that kind of sets this monitor apart in addition to what it already has. And it just kind of lacks that. Um, it, it's kind of an odd decision. I, I really want to see what Apple could do with something like a full blown A13 in this monitor that is truly unique and special, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so now let's talk about whether you should get this monitor. Would I recommend you get this monitor? Well, let's talk about price first. So this is base model, what I have here, $1,600, which is a lot of money for a monitor. That, that's quite a bit. And when you upgrade the stand to the height adjustable stand, now you're up to $2,000. And if you go further and you upgrade the screen to the nano texture, you max this thing out at $2,300. And the difference between $2,300 and $1,600 is very significant. If I was going to spec this out all over again, I would go with the exact same configuration that I have, maybe with the, the vase amount, but I'd keep it at that $1,600 price point. So this is a very niche monitor, much so more than any monitor I've ever seen. And if this fits your very specific use case of you want an Apple product that works with Apple computers that feature a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 port, then, and you want the 5K and the 600 nits of brightness and all that quality that Apple provides, then yes, get this monitor. This is what you've been looking for. But for a lot of people, that's not the case. People want monitors with high refresh rates, high resolution. They want the ability to connect it to any machine they want, Apple, Windows, Linux, a lot of people have multiple computers with multiple use cases and they want a monitor that is flexible in those ways. And if that's something you want or that your workflow requires, then this is not the monitor for you. The trade-off of those monitors is it's not made by Apple and you don't get that Apple quality and that ecosystem that you get with this monitor. So those are the trade-offs, but it's almost gonna be guaranteed a lot cheaper than this too. Or you could go with the $6,000 uh, Apple Pro Display XDR, which is an entirely different conversation, but that is something to keep in mind. And that's really it for my review. I went over pretty much everything this monitor features and my opinions on some of them and what I've experienced with this monitor so far. I like it. it, it's a good monitor. I'm definitely keeping it and I am looking forward to see what other innovations Apple has with this monitor or iterations. If they're going to release a third monitor that slots in between this and the Pro, X Display, the Pro Display XDR, we'll just have to wait and see. But let your voice be heard down in the comments below and let me know if you plan to pick one of these up or if you have one, let us know what your feedback is on it and what you think of it. Anyways, I'm Taylor. This has been my review and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next one.